The unemployment Good rate yesterday, 7.4%. How much worse does it get? Uh, well, the unemployment rate uh, is uh, less than what we feared it would be when we first went into this crisis. I mean, back in March, the Treasury uh, was uh, advising us to expect an official unemployment rate of about 10% by the end of June. Uh, and uh, on the back of the easing of restrictions throughout uh, the latter part of May and, and June, uh, 280,000 uh, people went back into the labour market, workforce participation went up, uh, 210,000 uh, jobs were restored, uh, and indeed hours worked uh, went up, uh, underemployment went down. So uh, things uh, in June were certainly heading in the right direction. And if mm. you look at the, uh, the number of people receiving unemployment benefits stabilised, in fact, it was slightly lower uh, than at the end of, uh, at the end of May. So... Uh, yeah. Look, I mean, of course, I mean, this is a tough period. We're dealing with the economic consequences of a global pandemic. But compared to what it could have been and compared to what it's like in other parts of the world, uh, we uh, continue to show an incredible resilience. Isn't it a bit misleading, though, when you're talking about these extra jobs that have come online? I mean, that, that, that includes people who have only picked up a couple of hours' work, right? Well, it's true. I mean, you know, clearly uh, many of these jobs are part-time jobs. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't, I mean, this, this, this is why the uh, data has always been uh, presented. So you've got to compare apples with apples. I mean, you know, they, we're not sugarcoating this. Of course, this continues to be a tough period. We continue to deal with the economic uh, impact of a global pandemic, which uh, has had devastating effects around the world and which has had a very negative impact mm. uh, on the economy and jobs here in Australia. I mean, you know, there's, no, nobody's uh, shying away from this, but... Uh, if you compare what's happening here with what's happening in other parts of the world, if you compare mm. what's happening here with what we feared might happen earlier this year, then, then we are in a comparatively uh, better position. But yes, I mean, there's still a long way to go. What, what sort of a jump are you expecting next month when those Melbourne figures are going to be included after its lockdown? <clears throat> well, look, it, it will have a negative impact, no question. I mean, that, that is why it's so important. Uh, to remain on top of uh, the virus, uh, you know, where uh, case numbers are uh, very low and, and to get on top of the virus as soon as we can in those areas where there are localised outbreaks. Mm. And, you know, we, we've, got to, we've got to do everything we can to, to deal with the health uh, threat in order to get ourselves back on track uh, as best we can economically. OK, you've got your economic report that's due out next week. Uh, are you expecting government debt to hit $1 trillion? Uh, look, I mean, I'm, we're going to provide the update uh, on the 23rd of July in an orderly fashion, as we always do when we provide these sorts of economic and fiscal uh, updates. But, I mean, everybody knows that we've had to uh, incur significant additional uh, expenditure on the back of the COVID mm. uh, pandemic, about $50 billion additional expenditure as a result of decisions in the 2019-20 financial year, which comes on top of uh, the uh, economic parameter variations, I mean, the, uh, the drop in revenue and the increase in expenditure as a result of what is happening mm. in the economy. Uh, so, you know, clearly, I mean, this, this is going to be a... Uh, I mean, we, we are dealing with a very serious fiscal hit. But as a result of the work that we've done over the last six or so years, we did go into this crisis in a, in a mm. stronger fiscal and economic position than we otherwise would have. Do you, ex do you expect, though, that government debt will go beyond $1 trillion? Well, again, uh, I'm not uh, going to provide our economic and fiscal update for you today. We'll be doing that in an orderly fashion on Thursday, uh, so it's not much longer to go. OK. Uh, the Prime Minister has flagged looking at extending industrial relations exemptions to employers who will no longer use JobKeeper. Is that something that you're pushing for as well? Well, we've got to ensure uh, that um, we give um, business the confidence uh, to invest and to hire more Australians uh, as soon as uh, possible. And, and so whatever we can do uh, to make it easier for business to uh, hire more people uh, you know, is something that we should all uh, be committed to. I mean, nine out of ten uh, jobs across Australia uh, are in the private sector. Uh, they depend on the future success uh, and profitability and viability of private sector businesses. And so we need to ensure that uh, those businesses have the best possible opportunity to survive and to thrive uh, so that uh, you know, more jobs can be created as soon as possible. So that means that unions are going to have to stay flexible, right? And, and what happens if they aren't? 
Uh, well, look, I, I've got to say, through this crisis, uh, employer groups and uh, unions uh, have done a great job in coming together in the uh, national interest and the public interest. And you know, everybody understands the economic challenges we're facing. And this is this is not about this is not the time for everyone to go back into their corner uh, and uh, fight partisan battles. This is a time when, as Australians, we all uh, have to come to together as we have and need to continue to come together in order to put ourselves into the best possible position to get through this yeah. in the best possible way. When it comes to JobKeeper extensions, and we've talked about this before, it, it's going to be something different. It, it'll be uh, a new kind of policy. Does that mean businesses will have to be means tested again to qualify? Uh, well, you know, the, the initial JobKeeper program was put in place for six months. It comes to an end at the end of uh, September. And, uh, you know, any businesses that qualified at the beginning because of their drop in turnover at that point remained eligible all the way through that initial six-month period. Now, the truth is that a lot has changed uh, during this period. Uh, a number of businesses have seen uh, strong recoveries. Other businesses continue uh, to be seriously challenged. And so the support beyond the end of September will have to be on the basis of assessed need. Uh, you know, businesses that have recovered or are, are recovering clearly won't need uh, the sort of support uh, that has been uh, in place, uh, you know, over the last few months on an ongoing basis, but other businesses will. So uh, it, it, will, it will come down to making sure that we uh, properly assess uh, the need and identify and target the support uh, into those areas uh, where that support is indeed needed. OK. Uh, Minister, tax breaks coming for Hollywood. Uh, is it fair in the current climate? Well, it's a very important uh, measure to boost jobs. I mean, one of the hardest hit uh, sectors in our economy has been the arts, entertainment and events uh, sector. And, um, you know, th this is not just uh, actors. I mean, this is like carpenters and lighting technicians and special effects uh, uh, experts. I mean, you name it, uh, crews. And, and so this is, this is quite an industry which has been very heavily hit. Uh, there is an opportunity here for Australia, given how comparatively well we've performed in terms of suppressing uh, the virus, there is an opportunity here for us uh, to attract significant business and to generate mm. uh, significant jobs in an area, in, in a sector of the economy that has been very heavily hit. So, I mean, we, we have been, uh, you know, doing, providing this sort of targeted support into uh, sectors of the economy that have been badly impacted, like the aviation sector and the arts uh, entertainment and events uh, sector is another such sector, as well as the tourism sector, of course. Well, what's the modelling on it? I mean, how many... Just for example, how many more films are you expecting to be made here because of these extra incentives, bearing in mind that there were already well, incentives in place? Well, well, I mean, look, uh, you know, this is um, something that will be rolled out over the next uh, seven uh, years. I mean, this will uh, generate, you know, we, we would expect that this will uh, help attract uh, significant blockbuster uh, movie activity uh, into Australia. Um, you know, um, Paul Fletcher, the Minister for uh, Communications and the Arts, uh, who has, uh, you know, obviously led the charge in putting this package together, uh, is, uh, you know, working his way through all of these things at the moment to make sure that we get the biggest bang for our buck in relation to this initiative. But this, this has worked very well in the past, uh, and, uh, you know, we've got no reason uh, to believe that this will not work in the, into the future, particularly uh, given the comparatively good position Australia is in uh, when compared to other locations uh, from a health point of view. OK, uh, just finally, uh, on a lighter note, a grand final, if it's not going to be held in Victoria uh, this year, Minister, would you be happy for it to be held in Brisbane? Of course you would. Um, you know, I, I think that if, um, you know, we all want to see Melbourne and Victoria get on top of the virus as soon as possible, but if the grand final cannot be held uh, in, uh, if the grand final cannot be held in Melbourne, the only uh, alternative location, <laughs> surely, uh, should be Optus uh, Stadium uh, here in Perth. Uh, it is clearly the next best stadium in terms of uh, numbers of spectators and ambience and uh, and, you know, there's no question. Uh, despite if, if not Queensland, in, not in, uh, despite Melbourne, Queensland doing all of the heavy lifting to keep the season alive. Uh, well, you know, and, and that's why they should uh, share. They should share the love. Uh, they, they can uh, do all of the work now, and and then you know we, we are there to provide our fantastic stadium uh, for an exciting grand final here in Perth. 